time. And as we heard last night, if you want to be there while the, while the, cook is, while the pot is cooking, now is the time to be here. Um, it's now the time to be in iron ore as well. China's grown 300, has urbanised 300 million people in the last 10 years. They're going to urbanise another 300 and 350 million people over the next 10 to 15 years. That's building the United States again in the next 10 to 15 years. The, the desire for China to control 50% of its iron ore going forward, those fundamentals still exist. The growth of iron ore will continue, whether China GDP continues at 10%, it's not expected, it will come down to 7% of an ever-increasing base. The demand for iron ore to satisfy the fundamentals, including the fundamentals in Africa, as Africa grows, is still there. This is the time for the right projects. And when I talk about the right projects, I'm talking about projects that are strategic, that offer more than just a simple project, projects that are low cost, um, that will deliver ore you know, at a time when always people will want it. It's got to be capital efficient. And if you want to produce in 2017, 2018, you need to be ready today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Julio. Now we're going to have a presentation looking at the investment environment and the environment uh, uh, around uh, the way companies that operate in the region are viewed. Uh, Christoph Asselino is a partner in Shim and Sterling LLP, a uh, major international law firm, and Christoph is in charge of the Africa practice. He's qualified in both France and Australia and has had more than 25 years of experience acting for mining companies or lenders in dozens of projects in Africa, but also in Australia, Asia and South America. But they were this song, they were all equipped with laptops and they could quote at me the price of the commodity on, on a weekly basis. Basically they had all the information to the fingertips. The one thing that they didn't have is they hadn't negotiated that many contracts. And the other thing that they didn't have, they couldn't compare um, the taxation in their country in the same way as we could, equipped as we were uh, in sort of very solid uh, countries. The thing is that the negotiation was a lot fairer, I can tell you, than the, than the, the one I had done 20 years ago. It was also a lot faster, but still, it could, it could have been even better if those guys had actually had the exposure and experience to uh, all the experience that is gaining in, a, in or that exists in a country such as Australia. So, you know, I'll just finish to say that uh, in terms of getting a, getting a fair deal and, and making the whole thing uh, fair for everybody. I think Australia's got a role to play, not only because of investors going in there, but I think the government could actually step in with African government and try to help them getting stronger in their negotiations, then get better deals. It doesn't mean we get poorer deals, I think we get fairer deals and they last longer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christoph, and I'm pleased to say that uh, my organisation, as well as the African Minerals Development Centre, which is oversighting the implementation of the African Mining Vision, um, is actually working up um, some major training courses in win-win uh, negotiation. So we hope that uh, uh, negotiation skills amongst African governments and uh, community representatives continues to improve. It is now my great pleasure to introduce His Excellency Hassan Abdi Duale, who is the Minister for Energy and Minerals in Somaliland. Uh, as Minister, Mr Duale is charged with directing President Ahmed Siliano's agenda to develop Somaliland's energy and mineral resources in an environmentally responsible and sustainable way for the benefit of its people admirable uh, objective, one that I think Mr. Duale is well aware of some of the challenges that he is going to shortly enthuse us about the and mineral potential. But before he does, I should note that uh, the Minister has not come to this role in the usual way, if there is a usual way of coming to become a Minister, because prior to this, his new career, he was with the Los Angeles Metropolitan Transportation Authority, managing multi-million dollar contracts in 
uh, contracts in CNG plants and fueling systems. And if you know Los Angeles, um, there's a lot of road right there and uh, they need a lot of fuel. Um, prior to that, um, Mr. Dulo was a uh, petroleum engineer with Chevron USA, where he oversaw uh, oil exploration and production operations at both onshore and offshore fields. So we have another oil man who and now is adding minerals to his portfolio. Please welcome the Minister. It's a great pleasure to be at this uh, wonderful conference. Uh, you know, distinguished delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very deeply honored to be here um, for the first time, as a matter of fact, uh, to speak uh, at, the, I think, the 10th or the 11th anniversary of Africa Down Under, I believe, 10 years, I guess. Uh, we are very thankful for uh, Bill uh, Rippert and his uh, team in Beirut to uh, invite us here. Uh, and indeed, it's, uh, it's a great honor for us to, to appear here for the first time uh, to, uh, to really present Somaliland's uh, mineral potential to the Australian mining community. Special thanks also, I want to really, I want to really uh, give to uh, Senator Honorable Bob Carr, the former Minister of Australia, uh, the Honorable Gary Gray, uh, Minister of Resources and Energy Australia, and the Honorable Premier of uh, Western Australia, uh, Colin Barnett, what well, their very wonderful uh, uh, hospitality and warm welcome for myself as well as my African colleagues, ministers and head of delegation. So we're really deeply thankful for, uh, for this warm reception that they accorded us as well. Uh, I want to really just uh, go through my presentation here uh, to uh, start with some introduction about Somaliland, uh, talk a bit about the bedrock geology and the mineral potential of the country. Uh, Somaliland basement, uh, I want to touch up on some of the metallic minerals present, potential areas, and some recent deposits, and I will conclude at that. Uh, for those of you who are not that familiar with Somaliland, it's not to be confused with Somalia, which I guess all of you know for all the wrong reasons. Uh, we have been a fairly stable country for uh, democratic government for 22 years in coming. Uh, we're often referred to as the beacon of stability in the Horn of Africa. Uh, we're very low risk in terms of above ground risks. Uh, we're a pro-development, a pro-business government. Uh, we have uh, testament to that to our stability and good business environment is we have several oil and gas, you know, international uh, oil and gas companies operating in Somaliland uh, yeah, yeah, right now. Uh, they are publicly traded. Uh, some of them are basically listed in the Australian Stock Exchange. Some are listed in the London Stock Exchange. Some are in other you know, European Stock Exchanges. So that is really a testament to uh, the good environment uh, you know, for international investment to Somaliland. We're fairly new. We're green, so to speak. Uh, green fields, uh, you know, frontier in terms of mineral uh, exploitation. Uh, but I think we've kick-started uh, the hydrocarbon side of the business. Uh, there wasn't really much happening three years ago when I took this post. Uh, thank goodness, uh, right now we have uh, a very uh, vibrant, uh, you know, active uh, exploration program in the hydrocarbon sector. Uh, we're going to start shooting seismic this year and hopefully try to drill the first well, spread the first well next year. So I just thought that would probably be a good time for me to head back, to head down to Perth to get you start the mining sector of Somalia. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we've just finished up a new mining code, which we have not really basically turned into law yet. It's fairly competitive, it's very robust, modern. We think it's going to be as competitive as it gets in Africa. And uh, with that, I think uh, we will be able to uh, hopefully attract uh, some of the, you know, uh, uh, aggressive companies uh, in the mining sector in, in, in certain uh, in Western Australia to take a look at our uh, resources there. You look at the map here, if I refer to this particular map here of Somaliland, uh, you know, uh, it shows where the mineralized zone is. It basically hugs the coast. Uh, the, my, uh, uh, the former speaker mentioned how close that resource in Liberia was to the coast. Well, this is as close as it gets, it's like 25 meters, 25 uh, kilometers, 30 kilometers, so to speak, give or take. Uh, major iron deposits uh, you know, up and down the coast. Most of them are lying along the coast. 
And not only that, we are across from one of the busiest shipping lanes in the globe, uh, the Red Sea Corridor, and across from the major markets of, of, of the heavy metal, of the major minerals that's used today. Uh, we have DC port in Barbara. Uh, so that's definitely a, a, a very advantageous position, geographically speaking, in terms of exploiting and, and basically developing uh, the mineral resources of Somalia. Uh, geological environment in our country uh, indications are that they are you know, very favorable for discovery and development of several types of metallic uh, minerals. Uh, some recent uh, geological surveys indicate that our country has abundant uh, deposits of iron ore. I know the speakers before me were eloquent enough to talk about a lot of uh, iron ore uh, 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 operations in Western Africa, rightfully so, there's a lot of resources there. But this is basically untapped. Uh, and uh, proven a uh, fairly large uh, potential uh, for iron ore that's basically on the eastern side of the continent, much, much closer to the world markets if it, is, if it has to be exploited. Uh, we have, uh, you know, as I said, abundant iron ore deposits, manganese, platinum, and gold, vein, and gold bearing veins. Uh, we have other type of minerals that have been known to exist in some other lands, such as tantalite, columbite, tin. Felspar, Kali, Kainat, Lead, so on and so forth. So this is a fairly, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of metallic uh, base metals are there. Uh, the bedrock geology uh, of Somaliland, uh, looking at this, the top slide here, as I see, as you can see, this, uh, the Somaliland basement uh, outcrops is an east-west orientation, uh, running parallel to the structure of Somaliland plateau, and it's just along the coast. So most of our mineralized zone is right there and it basically holds most of the base metals. The bedrock geology in Somalia, if you look at this bottom column here, uh, the different covers indicate the different uh, types of minerals that are hosted by this uh, geologic uh, times. Zinc, uh, um, zinc, uh, lead uh, on the top one here, uh, and then we have the, the yellow, gold, copper, zinc, silver. Uh, the bottom of here has uh, the, 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 what do you call the, the rivers, such as uh, you know, uh, uh, Tantalum and Neopia. So my basement consists of high-grade protozoic metamorphics, uh, pegmatites, and granitoids, which is considered to be the northeastern branch of the Mozambique belt. 900 million years ago, we were just as, uh, next to Mozambique, I guess, or Madagascar. And uh, you know we're basically uh, you know the, the north eastern uh, northeastern branch of the Mozambique Belt, which of course all of the people in the you know mining community you know has a lot of uh, uh, minerals and base levels. Uh, so we're basically part of that uh, you know uh, uh, belt. So most of the mineral types that we in the Mozambique Belt are basically uh, present in Somalia. This slide shows uh, the kind of minerals uh, at the that, that, that are present. Uh, they are colored over here. Uh, the orange bands uh, host uh, uh, gold, copper, zinc uh, series. Uh, the tertiary rocks that have sufficient metals, so they said, is gold and silver. The carbonates here, uh, which are the green bells, they host zinc, uh, lead, uh, and you have silver deposits like in that of Yemen. And then, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, again, back to the orange uh, uh, bands here, they are basically equivalent in age to, to the Red Sea Hill, uh, you know, uh, 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 rocks in Egypt, Sudan, Eritrea, and Ethiopia, which uh, uh, all of you know have uh, been, had uh, a lot of uh, gold uh, exploit uh, exploitation. More, more metals, more uh, minerals, uh, metallic minerals that are present include tin, tungsten, molybdenum, and uh, similar intrusive minerals through the rest of the area. Uh, and again, the rare earths are fairly abundant uh, based on analyses and anomalies that, uh, <coughs> that, uh, that, that have been uh, you know, found. Uh, tantalum, columbite deposits uh, are really basically across the mineralized area uh, are basically known to, to, to be present. This is just a shot of uh, columbite veins uh, in some of the areas, uh, the pegmatite uh, vein areas that has plenty of these uh, columbite veins uh, up and down uh, the, uh, the mineralized areas.
We have, as I said, a large uh, uh, unexplored, unexploited, unproven uh, deposit of iron ore uh, in several, many, in several areas in Somali land. Uh, they are very close, as I said, 45 kilometers at the most to the port of Barbara. Uh, and they go east, west, up and down the mineral rise zone area there. We also have uh, manganese that can be found not too far away also from the coast uh, near Barbara and Mike. Uh, there is uh, stream sampling has delineated the planet series group denominators and associated uh, with igneous complexes. Uh, again, these other minerals are present throughout tantalite, columbite being one. And uh, finally, as far as some of the major industrial minerals, we have coal deposits that have been shown up and down all the outcrops uh, that basically are, you know. Uh, uh, Fairly good thermal coal, I would say, uh, similar to some of the coals that were exploited uh, that's been talked about in the last presentation yesterday in, in the rest of East Africa. This definitely, uh, again, can really kind of you know, come in handy in terms of exploiting some of these uh, industrial minerals when the need comes to really generate power. So uh, this is, again, very, very close to the coast along the same uh, mineralized areas. This is just a shot of uh, manganese hosting sediments, uh, you know, very, very close to the coast, uh, high, high concentrations, uh, and this is basically uh, about 20 to 25 meter, uh, kilometers from, from the port area of Alberta. We don't really have a whole lot of data uh, to speak of. As I said, we are basically green fields. Uh, you know, it's a country that needs to be uh, explored and uh, you know evaluated. Uh, but uh, there's some, you know, very few uh, studies that was done. Some of them, one of them being uh, done by the USGS uh, survey in 1970, the 70s rather, and they have done quite a bit of kind of economic analysis, which uh, indicated a lot of iron again, as I said. In this one location alone, back in the 70s, they were estimating 1.6 billion tons that's uh, exploitable. Uh, you know, uh, additional, many, many other areas uh, that have iron, uh, some estimates put the number of iron tons available for exploitation with the 100 billion uh, uh, ton range. Other minerals uh, include uh, manganese and melanin, and copper and nickel as well. And this uh, study is that was done by the USGS uh, back in the 70s. Gold also is known to have, uh, you know, uh, been, uh, you know, uh, found in the in the pyrite, you know, uh, 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 bearing pyrites, uh, porcites, and uh, other minerals as well as zinc, copper, and nickel as well. So these are basically coming off the same study that was done by the USGS uh, in in the 70s, and this is one of the few uh, studies that we have. I'll be more than happy to share that with any. Uh, In addition to the, the basement, we have uh, heavy mineral sands that are really fairly abundant and extensive up and down the coast. Uh, this recent the field work that was done on this uh, uh, Somaliland coast confirms the presence of high concentration of titanium and iron invading uh, mineral sands. And some of the analysis that was done these uh, indicated helminite, glutal, titanite, and titanite, magnetite, really the XRD and CM analysis. These are basically fairly easy to exploit. They're just basically sitting on the coast, and uh, with very, very little investment, uh, we've had actually uh, one of the few interested, uh, you know, uh, companies that we really came to really look at this, uh, you know, uh, was uh, very, very encouraged uh, and indicated that they were willing to really invest and, and really start exploiting it right away. And in, in two years' time, they said they'd be able to, to be in production. Conclusion, Somaliland presents an unusual opportunity. Uh, this is really a place that I said is a spot in export. It's off the uh, you know, beaten path. Uh, it is definitely not uh, the proven reserves that are basically being exported in West Africa. Uh, this is uh, definitely an area that we feel have a significant amount of resources to be discovered. It's uh, for those who are really willing to come in uh, with uh, balanced risk analysis. Uh, and who wants to come in the ground floor 
for a country that is just about to start its mining, uh, mining industry. So this is just a, a great opportunity for uh, for the juniors and, and the companies that are really willing to take uh, some uh, balanced risk. Uh, recent geology is uh, surveyed, as I said, indicate a uh, significant amount of iron ore, manganese, and platinum, uh, and all the base metals that I really mentioned that are all there. Uh, you know, the coastline, again, has high concentration of titanium and iron bearing mineral sands that can easily be exploited. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, lot of investment. And then, of course, we've talked about the number of uh, these rare earth metals that are really widely available. Uh, in, in, in you know, this is some of our zone. So, uh, what I really basically uh, you know, invite uh, the Australian mining companies that are really basically active in Africa. Uh, for those of you who want to really don't want to travel too far away to the west side, uh, it's closer here on the east side. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we will uh, be more than happy to uh, host you and have you come down and take a look at uh, what uh, some other than us offer in terms of uh, potential. We feel uh, there are minerals that are in the Mosley belt uh, are all there in Somaliland. It's just a matter of basically spending the time and effort to get them out and uh, you know, come up and, and partner with a country that's in the making and, and grow with us. And uh, we are willing to uh, basically uh, support you uh, all the way, shoulders to shoulder. And if any of these companies are really interested to come down, uh, as long as I'm minister, I can assure you that you will have our full support and make sure that you succeed in Somaliland. Thanks again. flyers with my assistants here. Uh, for those of you who want to pick up a flyer with our contact information and a summary of what we have offered here, we want to have to talk to any one of you guys uh, after the, you know, the, the, the session concludes. Thanks again. Thanks very much, Minister. Um, we are now much better informed and if we pick up one of your flyers and then make contact afterwards, I'm sure we'll get a lot more information. Somaliland. Long way from home. Yeah, from Somaliland. <laughs>
This is our fourth year that we've been sponsoring this event. And we believe that our commitment to Africa, the relationship with Australia, is an important part of the continued growth of the mining and the oil and gas sector in future, and specifically the relationship between Africa and Australia. So, thank you to Bill and the team for allowing us to be part of this great event, and again for sponsoring this evening. I again have the privilege this evening to introduce and welcome the foreign ministers. So if you'll allow me to just uh, acknowledge them. Firstly, I'd like to welcome the Minister of Energy and Minerals for Somaliland, the Honourable Hussein Duale. Then the Minister of Geology and Mining for Angola, the Honourable Manuel Francisco Queros. The Minister of Mines for Gabon, the Honourable Regis Imangolt. The Minister for Mineral Resources South Africa, the Honourable Susan Chimango. The Minister of Min Minerals, Energy and Water Resources, the Honourable Onkokama Kitsu Mukaila. Ministry of Mines and Steel Development for Nigeria. Honourable Bak Musa Mohamed Sada, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Tourism for Zambia, the Honourable Christopher Galuma, the Minister of State in Charge of Mining for Rwanda, the Honourable Ivoe Imina. Then I'd also like to specially mention the former Botswana President, the Honourable Festus Buhai, and then the heads of delegation from the following countries, Burkina Faso, Mozambique, Niger, Tanzania, Mozambique, Ghana, Mauritania, Guinea, and also all the African and Australian heads of missions present and honourable guests. I'd like to now ask us to please propose a toast, but I'd like to propose a toast to the honourable foreign ministers and the delegations. So could we please raise our glass to the ministers? Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We draw expertise from around the world to do this and to service these clients. But we live in Africa and we use African resources to service clients in Africa, and increasingly we're using African resources to service that global network. Please join me in welcoming Colin Barnett. Thank you, John, for that welcome. And may I in turn welcome uh, all of uh, our guests uh, from Africa, uh, ministerial level, uh, heads of delegations, uh, all of you. And uh, I'm so delighted to uh, uh, welcome you to Perth and to Western Australia. West Australia is uh, one third, the western third of continental Australia. Uh, it has a large geographic area. There are in fact only eight countries in the world larger than Western Australia. Uh, we're equivalent to about a twelfth of the size of the African continent. And yet we only have 2.4 million people. So small population, heavily concentrated in Perth, uh, remoteness, long distance, travel cost, travel time, um, many features, I guess, that uh, nations within Africa would, would identify with. Uh, exploration is by its nature high risk, whether it be in Australia or in an African state. Um, and there are difficulties of isolation, distance, topography, social issues and the like. But there must be a clear, uh, legally backed and credible system of progressing from exploration through to a mine. In this state, we have a, a mining tenement system which has been built up over the years, which has that credibility, okay? sometimes disputes, but very rarely now, uh, from prospecting licences to exploration licences to retention licences to preserve access to the deposit and ultimately to a mining licence. Developing and maintaining that uh, system of accounting for mining and who's got rights to what is not easy, it's expensive, it's complex, but it, it is essential. And I'd urge countries again to give attention to that. For companies, security is important. Mining is anywhere is a high-risk business uh, and an expensive business. Very hard to develop a low-cost mine. Uh, so companies must give the security. The title system is essential to that. Uh, consistency of a well-established, well-crafted mining law. 
Uh, consistency of that law from changes of government, which happen from time to time, uh, is critical. And, and that's you know, reducing sovereign risk uh, and getting certainty. Equally, uh, as companies, hopefully if they find a mineral resource and want to progress it through to production, um, need the security of the titles they might hold, but also need a security and a predictability of the process. The process for approving and agreeing to a mining development has to have, uh, if not timelines, but a defined process. And again, that is not something unique to a developing nation. Um, when the government I lead came into power in 2008, there were 19,000 mining applications in the overall approval system. Uh, we've got that down to 5,000, which is maybe about normal for term, but it takes effort to administer that, to keep it credible, to avoid disputes, to get it online, uh, to have tracking systems online. Uh, all of that has been developed uh, at a government level in conjunction with the growth of the industry. Uh, one particular issue, and I know we've had our issues in the past in this area, and I know in, in many African nations, uh, sometimes projects have been developed, um, and mainly by international business uh, or international governments, uh, and the host nation has sat back and at the end of the day said, we didn't get much out of that, and some ministers have made comments to me uh, over the last two days about projects that have not fulfilled uh, the ambition, have not delivered uh, revenues or prosperity or what was anticipated. Uh, the one thing that none of us can do is give away a mineral or hydrocarbon for no price. We should never ever do that. That has happened in our respective histories. It should never ever happen. And to the mining industry who might be thinking aghast, uh, it is in your interest, it is in your long-term interest that the host nation uh, derives a fair return for the minerals and the petroleum resources owned by that nation. And there is confusion around that issue, and there is confusion in Australia around that issue. And I'd simply make this little dichotomy. Uh, you must always sell the mineral. Uh, sometimes when you collect a royalty, as the state government does here, and we collect $4.2 billion a year, so it's not bad. When you collect a royalty, the, the industry will often describe that as a tax. It is not a tax. It is the price you pay to acquire a publicly owned, government owned natural resource. And I would urge all of you, I know there is a, you know, an attraction to profit based taxes and the like. Um, the economic theory is full of that. But I know I'm an economist, but I urge you to be cautious. Make sure that your pricing regime has a royalty, and it should be a royalty that picks up not only the volume of the material, but the price. So no good having you know, $10 per tonne. It's got to be an ad valorem royalty that picks up production and picks up the benefit of a rising price. That is the system we have in Western Australia, and it does work well, and it guarantees that not a grain of mineral or a molecule of hydrocarbon goes out without the company or the ultimate customer paying for it. Um, profits taxes, big intellectual debate about that in Australia, um, and I understand and there's a logic to it. But you've got to be absolutely sure that you've got a really tight taxation system. And for a developing nation, you may not have yet a sophisticated and tight taxation system. It may be possible to shift profits around from locations, um, and if a company makes no profit or even makes a loss, why should it get its minerals for free? It should pay for that as it pays for everything else. So if you go down the path of profits, taxation, I would suggest that is something that comes after the basic royalty, however that structure is paid. As a West Australian government, um, it has been put to me over the years by many people in the mining industry that Africa could be a threat to us. Uh, Africa has such large mineral reserves that Africa could grow up uh, and develop those and uh, that would reduce our market share. I don't, and I think probably many people at this conference don't agree with that. Uh, Africa, the development, development of the African mining industry is not a threat to Australia and is not a threat to Western Australia. And indeed the fact that so many West Australian companies are involved in projects uh, in Africa shows that we benefit by the growth of your mining industry. Uh, as a Premier, in conjunction with the Australian Government, um, we support the work that has been done through scholarships, and I'm sure Gary will make mention of that as well. Uh, and also make the offer. Um, uh, the West Australian Government is prepared to 
to send uh, some of our, uh, our most experienced and best officials in mining, if you wish, to, to go to your country, to discuss some of the issues I've been talked about, to give you advice, to give you an account of our experiences as a mature, uh, highly developed mining economy, should you wish to use that. And we do it for self-interest, because we want Australian business to be part of your development, but we also want to see Africa and its, uh, its 54 nations, and particularly the ones represented here today, to develop, to be able to improve the living conditions of their people, uh, and to develop, like us, a mining industry that can be a, a bedrock and, and a great substance uh, and growth for your economy. And I assure you that the West Australian government, the West Australian mining industry, and indeed for Australia as a whole, supports what you do, and we uh, quite genuinely offer uh, our assistance with any qualifications or anything return. We just want to see you prosper, because as you grow and prosper, we will also benefit. Thank you very much. experience, our mistakes and our successes, that is simply the most open-hearted and generous and practical offer that can be made. <laughs> um, but such is the, the, the power that's been built in this unique forum. Governments and business all the time try to create the kind of magic that brings together the ability of public administration, the capability of a diplomatic service, the energy of commerce, and the need of opportunity. And we do it in a number of forums. I have never seen one with the energy and the purpose and the outcomes that Africa Down Under brings. The simple idea of getting the Australian heads of mission together in 2004 uh, to be part of the term for Africa Down Under was simply inspired. And in this room, we have the people who have the capacity to change lives, to change economies, to change nations, to generate the wealth that will make life easier for an increasing proportion the billion people who live in Africa. Um, if I can just ask the, the various uh, mining ministers that we have in the room to just come and stand up here. It's an extraordinary array of ministers, resources ministers, uh, ministers with the opportunity and the capability to change lives, to generate wealth, to manage their economies and their mining opportunities um, in ways that will make all of us in this room proud. Bill, I thank you for the opportunity to speak. I thank you all for your gracious generosity in being with us in Perth again. I know that you will be here next year and the year after that because Africa Down Under has become not simply a circle on a calendar around a date that we must all attend. Uh, but it's actually where we do business and we do good and we do it pretty well. And Bill, I thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, forums or conferences which tends to be different. 
they are different in the sense that they are focused. They are different in the sense that uh, what is normally referred to in the business circle as networking. Africa, which has adopted the African mining vision with an intention of growing its own mining commodities. So we really feel that uh, from the Australian point of view and the partnership which you share tonight, we feel it's an equal partnership and a respectable partnership more than a partnership we've had with other regions as an African continent. And we are confident that what we are seeing here, we are seeing partners. We are seeing investment which has a heart and investment which has a soul. In conclusion, I must say Africa is now. Join us now. This is the time. It's the African time. Don't wait for the pot to be cooked and ready and think you'll just come and dish up. Come and cook the pot with us so that the delicacy of the pot you can enjoy much better because we have contributed in the spices and everything in that particular meal. So for you it's now, it can be later. When you think you'll come in when the pot, when the pot is cooked and ready, you will find that you are not accepted. Join us in this journey as we move towards the prosperity of Africa. Thank you very much. So without further ado, I would like to invite the Chairman of African Professionals of Australia, my mentor and now a very personal friend, Tommy Ben.
who have migrated to countries such as Australia from Africa can provide, when Africa is ready, the human capital and skill base to develop Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. I can't help myself, but I have to say this before we go for dinner. Um, any catch of thoughts for that speech? There's something really profound that Tommy stands for uh, that uh, the doctor mentioned. I don't know if some of the Africans in the room got that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Manto tariq wa itahayin kawiyya sultan August waha halkan wa gada maadai boqa shidi ankutu gai dalka Australia, Western Australia magada da birth o anu imi shir alamiya o kusabsan maadinta o la ilaha wa Africa down under o ikaswa qabi galayin wazira badan o Africa khatimi o diga iga iyo wazira da ikaswa ta dawla da federalka Australia و وجه رئي و فريتان كشركة وجه رئي وزير كخارجية مركي تمنا أن كلنا أي وزير كخيرات كا أستراليا يو برايمير كا أما بريمير كا موها إستيت كا وسترن أستراليا اللي راهو حكومة مجارا ده بيرت شو كده عاي عاودا هو قد ما يسنا أن نلف دينا أي وزير كا معادن تا موها إستيت كا وسترن أستراليا Kunci syarikat anu ini mahalkan mukhmenti amu kalau hanya sifi an fi ayi nagu nama tay. Muha khairat kita ke Somalia lain. Oh an ini kunci war uhein. Syarikat alam yang hei Australia mungkin tak kau mukti kau tak khusus ana ada wah malu mana kahein. Wahano fursa anu helai ina anu labakun oh kasho kayb galah oh syarikat ini ayi maklumat kah helai mato ayi hayan. Oh kawar kawan dal kena oh hei khairat kita kunci. قارب بدنا إن شاء الله وهاي مقررة ساي ووهاي بالتاجين إن أي فورا كسر ميان وأركان ومقتة يعني أي ذلك إن شاء الله أي نقطة تلك كم ذا تلك أي شيء هذه إن مقتة حتى قبطان مقارنة آدي آدبان مقررة ساي شركة سي وسجولة ونقطة ماضي إن هل كم ما أنتوا حنا بقولي يا ما أنتوا بحنا بقولي يا أو دو وبحياة شر دير شر كلام خيال أنا يا وحن كسر قبل قبلين يا حضر كيجن محد آدی آدوب لعدن این رو علیو حاول و دی ندی حال کن آدی آد نو حوش دل و دی و هرمود که ها احمد محمد حسین شرمارک یا حسن محمد حلا و ریلی برای وقتی و دقایق آ حساس کودی عروت و دی مدویگا آرن تان قلا شقینی و نس نوری سونو نسورت قلی این شرکاس سیگولا و تلخ سومال دولت سومال نگودم آدوم آدی آدمان مانسیتی مسلمان